change of plan when we were doing our walk the park rangers uh yeah blocked our cars and said that uh, we're not allowed to drive like this in the park at all uh, so they called the park towing company that is going to escort us to an exit of the park so now we're discussing what are the options what do we do with jerry Next Meridian, we are Nick and Mathilde and we left everything behind to travel the world in our Land Rover Defender Albatross. Three years, seven continents, 88 countries and just the road as a home. In this episode, we leave Alvord Desert, Oregon and travel to Yellowstone, Wyoming to meet up with someone you probably know if you have seen our previous episodes. We were thrilled to discover Yellowstone and meet up with this amazing traveler again. Well, at least up until we suffered a breakdown. But let's start with the beginning. In the middle of the Alvo Desert, a beautiful place. While doing some amazing images uh, with the drone, we were also reading some fun facts about the Alvo Desert. It's also a place where they do uh, land speed records on the dry lake bed, so a day like this one. And in 2019, Jesse Combs beat the woman land speed record at a speed of 841 kilometers per hour. And she died in the process. It is both terrible and incredible. You might think there's no one. But we always have like a new card in our pocket. Let's go grab a coffee. Yeah, let's go grab a coffee. Let's go grab a coffee. We show you. Let's do it. We're still here in the desert, lunch with Andrew and Courtney that we've met in Alaska a few, no, actually in Fairbanks in Yukon. White horse. White horse, a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. And now we're just having lunch in the middle of the desert. We thought we were going to leave by lunchtime, but now we're going to all have lunch together. And they have a very cool gladiator. Courtney, Andrew and their son John are the ultimate traveling family. They cannot see their life anywhere else than on the road, and they have a hell of a cool setup. From the first time we crossed paths only 15 minutes at a gas station, we knew we would enjoy spending time with those two. Meeting them for unplanned coffee in the middle of Alvord was a joy. But soon enough, we had to go. We took four days to complete the road from the eastern region of Oregon to Yellowstone. We stopped in the lava fields of Craters of the Moon, heard our first howdy at a gas station, and completed miles and miles through the dry potato fields of the state. It's been straight for about 90 kilometers and we still have 60 kilometers to go and this is what it looks like, just straight. Look Viva here. Idaho! Yeah, that's, uh, that's all I'm doing, going straight. Our last camping spot in Idaho and it's really wild, it's really nice. We didn't see anyone on the tracks around, but 
the main thing I like about it is that we can see our first cactus! Mini cactus! There are not only cactus on the floor, there's also quite a lot of those. Gun bullets. It's like, yeah, gun bullets. That is also new. We also didn't find that on the floor in Canada. <laughs> and there are so many around. I think that's one thing like we are not used to either is uh, like we saw it also in Alaska is people carrying guns and like seeing those around we are like yeah USA baby We almost found the person we are looking for and he's not far. Are you ready? Do you guess who that could be? Hmm, if you watched some of the previous episodes, you would know. Oh, there he is! We see Jerry! We see Jerry! Yeah, you got it. This is Tom and Jerry. Hello! Yeah. the magical duo, Tom and Jerry. We found out that Tom was going to more or less be around the same area we were going to be. We got really excited. And, and we're just happy to see Tom because yeah, he's, he, he's a lot of fun. We met up, had a great lunch, bit of a catch up, and then um, did a bit of a tour around Yellowstone. Yellowstone is a dream of a place. You can see everything here, hot pools, geysers, animals and the legendary American bisons. Our plan? Spend the rest of the week exploring Yellowstone and Grand Teton. All three of us under the blue sky, so happy to see each other again. We found the bison just like five minutes after the park entry. They're so beautiful. Tom is considering getting his potato baked with this right now, which might work better than the Defender engine. We should try! One morning, um, we turn on the engine with Tom. The car takes a really long time to turn on, but it turns on. Minus six outside. Yeah, and the car was not happy to turn on this morning. Nope, it was really not. There's some frost on our front bed. There's nothing. Wanted yeah. to see we're like down here and okay. up here. So. Yeah. Okay, so we'll skip yeah. this too then, and we'll, we'll let's just do this then. This is boring. So let's uh, let's do that. We'll go to Google Maps anyway. I mean to the place okay. anyway, and then get Wi-Fi. Do this circle, and we can meet here or here. It feels a bit weird everywhere we go around Yellowstone. There's just like big infrastructures, like giant parkings general stores, there's a few camping, but everything is closed and everything is empty. Like it's really the end of the season. And uh, Tom was looking this morning at the weather forecast and he was saying that it's supposedly raining, uh, snowing in here and Grand Teton in all the area. 
in uh, three or four days. So we're enjoying probably the last uh, easy temperature and of the season. Let's see. And at some point we split with Tom. Tom goes his way and he says we'll catch up with you later that day because he wanted to do uh, some cycling. And um, as we drive, all of a sudden in the right, in the left rear mirror, I see poof, a big white smoke and I said, whoa, that's not normal because our car doesn't smoke. So right away I stop, I check the oil level and uh, the, on the stick that sort of tells you what the oil level is, was completely dry. So I said, uh-oh, so we put more oil until it came back up and even the one liter I put didn't show on the stick. So I was like, wow, a lot of oil is missing. So I look on the side and I see a lot of oil leaking down. So I said to Mathilde, like, this is going to be a, an issue. The beauty of having problems in Yellowstone is we can observe the bisons walking while fixing the car. So there was no network, no um well yeah no network so we couldn't do anything so we had to drive 20 more minutes until visitor center and there we found network just enough to contact uh different friends of ours who could tell us what the issue was and what we should do if we should continue driving by putting more oil or if we should stop so the decision was taken to stop and to just put the car uh, on a tow truck the craziness about this place i mean yellowstone is that we end up settling our issues with the view on the Elks. How cool is that? Nick is calling the insurance now. Yes, hello. Is this the insurance Seguro Gringo? went off for a mountain bike ride. It wasn't very long, but um, it was enough for Albatross to kind of get ahead of me on the loop. Um, and then came to uh, Mammoth Springs, I think it was, um, which wasn't very far down the road. And I, I'd come to an intersection, T intersection, and I looked left um, and looked right and then I was like oh shit there's there's albatross I thought they'd be way ahead of me by now um, and I saw us by the visitor center so I thought oh yeah it's sweet they're just perusing the visitor center so I went in there um, found them and I was like hey guys and the return from them was like uh hi <laughs> albatross is broken and I was like oh no that's not good and my glove was full of oil. Yeah, yeah, I've still... been under there. There's heaps of oil all around. Right. But yeah. So maybe that was the issue. Now, there was this one that I was talking to you about. If you come and look from here, yeah. You see right uh, here yeah. where my finger is. Yeah. It was full of oil, but now it's not leaking anymore. So I feel like that is. Tom has a very serious proposition for us. You're gonna tell you. Tow us? Oh, yeah. Till Denver. Till Denver. A thousand one hour camp. <laughs> yeah, mate, let's do it. <laughs> you wanna be part of the adventure? <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> I was like, at first he said it, and I was like, that's a joke. That's a right. joke too. I was like, that's <laughs> <laughs> be, I mean, I mean, I'm, I think it's going to be a memory we'll never forget. Yeah, exactly. I just feel bad that you're gonna skip through everything. I'm, that'd be right. <laughs> it's amazing, no? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's insane. Well, okay. I mean, we Let, can see stuff on the way. So yeah, we can yeah. Yeah. do a few little things on the way. You yeah, guys can sure. sleep in the back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we have a tent. Oh, yeah, we have the, our car, anyways, yeah. because it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It. But cool. So, in 20 minutes, they're going to call me back more or less. Let's just see what they say. And if it's like a huge hassle or whatever, then we can right. go for that. I just feel like. It's a long way. It's a long way, man. Yeah, 200k, yeah, yeah. if you're down for it, let's well, do it. Yeah. I feel like... And I kind of, I was keen to try towing it because I thought that'd be quite fun. Um, we've got the car, it can tow, so why not? From this exhaust thing. Yeah, it must be. Would that be what the guy was describing? That yeah. like, because there's too much pressure, like the oil is just like 
yeah. pushed back yeah. in all those areas. Could you could be right. You put everything you had, ah, Nick. Yeah, and your verdict doesn't look good. What yeah, happens? it's still it coming through here. Full of oil in there. Oh, okay, good. At least we know where it is. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll ask him this question and be like, hey, dude, so if it's something basic, can I go and you know, tow it to uh, this garage nearby? Yeah. Or if he tells me, look, man, it's something serious, don't touch. Okay. Yeah. Then we'll just go to Denver. Yeah. Cool. What did the insurance say? So the insurance said it's $100 that he can pay only, and to go to Denver is 3700 oh, <laughs> Well, it is 1,100 kilometers, so you gotta think of the fuel, you gotta think of the guys yeah, tying back and forth. Yeah, for Jerry, sure. Jerry's looking pretty yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, you know what? I love that Tom is like so much so chill. because we would yeah. never have like even dad asking oh, you. We never, We're yeah. super yeah. happy. Split the gas bill. Oh yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We can pay all of your gas. Yeah, I mean. no, no. <laughs> We have a plan. Someone on Instagram wrote us that there is a garage in Jackson capable of fixing defenders. Yeah. Jackson is only what? Four hours uh, from here, which is 250 kilometers. Yeah. So instead of having Jerry towing us all the way to Denver, we will start by trying to tow Albatross to Jackson. Thanks a lot, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> Brand new, never used. Finally now. Yeah, look. Right. Six months in. Is there a firmer too, man? Wow. <laughs> I don't get the yellow yeah, crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sky is blue, the sun is shining. Jerry and Albatross are attached together. This is the moment. Tom. Any any comments on the situation? Can Jerry do it? I think Jerry, Jerry can definitely do it. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Let me know when you're good to go. All right, good to go. But let's uh, maybe just um, what should be some of our signals and signs? Just because this could go wrong quickly in the sense, like I could bump into you or things like that. Yeah, for sure. So when I want to break, I'll say breaking, and then you'll need to start breaking first. And once the tension's taken up, then I can break as well. So, there's the weight. Almost stalled. <laughs> I think we're good. Ah. Ooh, that gives big shocks. We're good now. Yeah, we're good. Okay, stop. <laughs> that was smooth. That's perfect. Nice. I think by the end of the three days, we'll be pros at this. <laughs> First test went well, it's just we feel that it's way too short, the towing uh, rope at the moment. Like if he breaks and we don't like react in the split second, then we might just like go into his bumper. So let's try. All right, all right, still not up, still not up. All right, it just lifted. Sweet, okay, here we go. That was smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's way better. Yeah. Yep. Okay, that... changing to second. <laughs> oh, that felt good. <laughs> <laughs> now, at the end of this uh, four days, everything will be detached from this car. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Pulled out the ropes. Did a few meters just to make sure everything was working. Went for our last little visit on Yellowstone. And as we came back, we saw the Rangers in front of our car. And they were, or they had already called a tow truck. And they said, sorry, but you guys cannot uh, tow each other because inside the park, there's a lot of animals, a lot of people stopping the cars to take pictures. And the roads are not straight. Uh, so inside the park, you have to use the tow truck of Yellowstone. And you cannot call your own tow truck. So, just like that, between the hot pools, bull elks chilling under fancy geological features, and just another random defender passing by from Italy, we waited for our car to be towed. The mood was down. Thank you.
Forcefully, we had to take this tow truck, which picked us up and dropped us just outside the park, right outside the gates. And they said, okay, now you guys can do whatever you want. But we were like, okay, well, not much we can do now. That evening we, we were cold, we were hungry, we were upset, we were not happy because we had to pay such a high price because the plan was to do Yellowstone for a few days and continue on with Tom and do tons of fun stuff and everything had gone sideways so um, we were not very happy. That evening we just made food, turned on the diesel heater really high and just played cards in the car with Tom while we were just trying to imagine what the next day would look like. So that's it, we've been uh, towed out of the park, but the towing service just doesn't go beyond the park, so they just drop you on a giant parking. Good thing we have network here, at least. And now uh, we're cooking for the three of us so that we can play cards, drink beers, have a good food, and then we'll start thinking tomorrow. It's uh, not the time or the right temperature to be like thinking outside and the rest. So I'm just waiting for Tom to meet us here. And uh, yeah, and there's, we'll just have food, all of us, in the albatross and it will be fine. That's it for this week. Now we go and rest. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another challenge. Subscribe to the channel to see if we actually manage to leave this place and continue the world tour. See you next week. It is the first time we see one like that. One, two, three, four, five, six doors and the pickup. The thing is huge, but we saw them coming out of it and they have five kids, two pairs of twins, so it makes sense.